Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for i5 for the iPhone is provided by Cashfly at C A C A G F L Y dot com. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Shutterstock.com. With over 28 million high quality stock photos, illustrations, vectors, and video clips, Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. For 25% off your new account, go to Shutterstock.com and use the offer code i5114. everybody and welcome to i5 for the iPhone episode 74. This is the show where we scour the app store, we find tips, news, tricks and goodies and we sell them to Google for 3.2 billion dollars. Just kidding. That's where innovation goes to die. Just kidding. Number one. You know, I end every single show on i5 with a request out to all of you to send me videos of apps or tricks that you find. And you better believe that when I get one that's cool, I'm going to run it. Ethan has a great iOS duh tip that might make your next search session a little snappier. Hi, Sarah. Did you know the one entering a URL address in Safari, you could tap the period button and get .com, .net, .edu, .org, or .us, so you don't physically have to type it in on the keyboard. So we can put edu and it'll go right to the website. Thanks for watching, I'm Ethan. Thank you, Ethan. That's one of those duh tips that I assume everybody knows about already, but we all still kind of forget about, including me. However, little keyboard shortcuts are great when you make yourself use them enough so that it becomes second nature. I guess this is more of a reminder tip. Duh. Number two, it's a new year, 2014, and maybe you're ready to learn some new stuff. Enter an app called Coursera. It's a free way to drop in on a variety of courses virtually from your phone. You just sign up for an account, you agree to an honor code, basically that you'll be a good student and you won't cheat, and you won't share the curriculum with anybody who doesn't have their own account. If a class is already in session, you can jump right in and download lectures to watch offline. Every thread will be executing this kernel function. If a class is coming up, you can add it to your queue. The categories are easy to flip through, and I really can't hate on any app that lets you study from well-respected colleges for free, but I don't think you're necessarily going to find what you're looking for. For example, I searched for photo and only got a couple of courses, not like a ton. So it's limited, but it's the real deal. No harm in installing Coursera. It's free. See if the perfect course is in there just waiting for you. Number three. So when's the last time that you used Shazam? You know, the app that can scan the music around you, like if you're in a bar in your car and tell you what you're listening to, comes in handy. Well, Shazam is actually kind of different these days. First of all, it's not just about music anymore. Shazam can also detect what TV show is playing in your vicinity just by sniffing out the audio. In fact, it can even do it completely in the background if you don't want to think about it, even while you have the app minimized or doing something else. That's a brand new feature in Shazam. I did this last night and I decided to try it out while I was watching an episode of Saturday Night Live via Hulu Plus, so it wasn't live. And I got an interesting mix of ads and music and TV identification. Okay, so here's my problem. What the hell is that good for? If I'm watching a show, I know what I'm watching probably. Music discovery is still cool, I understand that, but I don't really need Shazam scanning commercials to give me more links to buy things. Ugh. What's the point of this, besides Shazam getting a lot more information about me? It's not all bad, I guess, though. Other new features include you can share Shazam tags to your friends on WhatsApp, if you use WhatsApp. You can share tags to your Pinterest board. You can even share an iMessage. But basically, meh. This seems like a case of an app that's tried to do too much and kind of lost its way. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Shutterstock.com. When's the last time you went to perusing in the Shutterstock library? I'm telling you, it's pretty fun. At Shutterstock.com, you can find the perfect image or video for your next creative project. Maybe it's your website, you want to spruce it up, or some sort of a publication, an ad, a video, any type of project. You can choose from quite a few high-quality stock photos, illustrations, vectors, and video clips. How many, you might ask? Oh, over 28 million. That's quite a few. This is pro stuff. The contributors to Shutterstock are professional photographers and artists, plus the company reviews each 
image individually, making sure it's awesome before it goes into the Shutterstock library. Plus, they're adding 20,000 images every day. So every time you visit, you're bound to find a lot of new stuff. You can choose from individual image packs or go with a monthly subscription for the best deal, and you can download any image in any size and pay just one price. Great search tools. You can search by subject or by file type. Maybe you're looking for a certain kind of emotion to convey something in your project. Plus, there are shareable light boxes, so you can share what you found with your team. They can go into your light box later and tell you what they think. An award-winning iPad app is almost the best way to search for stuff on Shutterstock. It even won a Webby. You can try Shutterstock today for signing up for a free account, no credit card necessary. Just start an account and start using Shutterstock and help make your next project a reality. Save images to a light box and review later. When you decide to purchase, use the offer code I5114 and new accounts will receive 25% off any package. That's Shutterstock.com and for 25% off new accounts, use the offer code I5114. And thanks to Shutterstock for sponsoring this episode of I5. Number four, we got a duh tip email from Updesh who writes, if you're like me and you have multiple email accounts configured on iOS and use them for different people, I have an account just for work, one for my wife, one for friends, when you start a new email, the from account will be automatically changed based on which account you sent the last email from. It's even cooler when the person that you're sending to also has multiple accounts. The email can tell which of your accounts links to which of their accounts. That way, I never have to send personal emails from my work account to my wife's personal account or to her work email from my personal account. For somebody like me with eight different email accounts configured, that's a huge saving. And it works wherever I send an email from, like if I'm sending somebody a link to a YouTube video. It'll automatically change the from based on who I choose in the to. A work colleague gets it from work, a friend from one of my other accounts. Uh, ugh. Updash, you get the i5 gold star this week. You are truly a man of organization and confusion and impeccable taste. But seriously, good tip. Finally, number five, let's finish off with an email from Wells, who's in a bit of a predicament when it comes to notifications. He writes, Problem. I'm a surgeon. When I'm in the operating room, I don't want my iPhone notifying me of anything if it's not crucial. When I'm not in the operating room, I'd like my iPhone to notify me of various things, like the tweets from my children, etc. Is there an app that will let me designate notification profiles so that I can limit notifications at certain times or places and then choose those notifications easily at other times and places? Well, not that I know of because Apple wouldn't want any app, no matter how well it was done, controlling what Apple prefers to manage at a system level, which obviously the notification center is. But you bring up a good point, Wells, because notifications can be very helpful or not helpful at all, depending on where you are and what you're doing. Your surgery room is your quiet time. Mine is during my commute. I can't be tempted to look at my phone. I already think the notification settings are pretty convoluted, so I'm not sure how adding things like geolocation or date and time toggles would help the interface, but I agree with you that it's a feature Apple should bake into iOS. One more thing before we sign off. Last week at the beginning of i5 episode 73, I said, I don't know what the significance of that number is, but it's probably significant to somebody. Well, it was. We got an email from Stephen who writes, I hope I'm not the only one who replied, or the only one who knows this, but the number 73 was highlighted by Dr. Sheldon Cooper, a character on The Big Bang Theory, as the best number. Dr. Cooper explains, 73 is the 21st prime number. It's mere 37, it's the 12th, and it's mere 21 is the product of multiplying. Hang on to your hats, seven and three. In binary, 73 is a palindrome, 1001001, which backwards is one. 0001001, exactly the same. Mind significantly blown. That was awesome. Okay, so who can top that with episode 74? I wanna hear it. If you ever hear or see a great app or trick on i5 and you wanna go back over it or pass it along to a friend, just hop on over to our show notes at twit.tv slash i5. That's where all of our links live and also where you can subscribe to the show with the feed of your choice. Email us at i5 at twit.tv, leave us a voicemail at 614 on i5, or send us a video with an app review of your own like Ethan did. I'm Sarah Lane, this is i5 for the iPhone, and and I'll see you right here next week.